coming up on tonight's broadcast, New Zealand's greatest newsreader, Dougal Stevenson. So long, Richard Long, the footage State TV didn't show you. As requested, some of your favourite moments from the last six weeks. And hold on to your pee pipes and samurai swords as we tally up the most shocking, sensational, sexed up and stupid moments of 2003. With the year drawing to a close, it's hard not to think about the events and the people who defined it. Tonight, we salute the good, the bad and the grotesquely ugly. The heroes and zeros, the highs and lows and especially the moments that just went sideways. The most shocking, sensational, sexed up and stupid moments of 2003. 23. MacGyver shows courage and stupidity in equal measure in the fight for life. Be no 22. The Blue Bucket Blues is the America's Cup runneth over. 21. This man will not be intimidated and neither will I. Bush and Blair invade Iraq searching for weapons of mass destruction they sold to them in the 1980s. 20. Dog bites girl, media hounds owners. No one looks good in the Carolina aftermath. 19. Crew members say, This fucking boat! 18. John Pilger and Sterling form in year's best documentary. I don't know Are people you really worried I, the U.S. is going to go? I, I, a decent I, law-abiding I, country and the U.S. I, is going to come in and say, we don't like the look of you, we're going to depose you. Is that something the U.S. has done quite often? How many countries has the U.S. attacked in uh, the last been, 15 been, years? Uh, well, since World War II, there have been 72 interventions by the United States. Was oh, that right? Yes. That's ludicrous. Well, it's not ludicrous, it's true. These are some of the countries where the United States, directly and indirectly, has overthrown governments, manipulated elections, and attacked popular movements since 1945. 17. <laughs> Reality TV reached new highs and lows in 2003. Oh. Mr. Personality was strangely compelling. Haley, the chopper's waiting. Do you have any idea who you want to take? Guys, I just... Uh... <laughs> Time was ticking away. Average Joe set Still the bar high with ugly so guys stupid. and prosthetics. The cameras reveal how she truly feels. 95% of them are not my type. And later, the guys are captivated by Milena. She's absolutely gorgeous. Who will make a good impression? Do you like broccoli? Broccoli? And which average Joes will be forced to leave? But the best was all our own as we fell in love with the family. I caught them myself. He caught up with an old neighbour. Honestly, they served me up. And this is where, this is where the placement was going. The only thing you were left to do, and you didn't do it. Fuck off yourself. 16. On, TV3's Hannah Hodson come came on. under attack from Angry Mum. I'm, I'm gonna have you for assault, darling. I don't care. You're not my problem. 15. Sky launched Shine on Channel 99, a Christian channel that's strangely compelling. I was listening to a few of my favourite carols, and I was thinking to myself, man, let's not get lost in Santa Claus and the good food without remembering the little baby, Jesus Christ, eh? And I find myself out many times with my friends partying, you know, doing foolishness. Did you ever just want to smack yourself upside the head and say, what on earth can I get my act together? Many times I yeah. tried. And not one thing that I have for you will get away! How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He is extraordinarily powerful. He's also subtle, deceitful, vile, and hateful beyond all human imagination. 14. I was tired. Holmes. It didn't work. I have apologized. I've hurt my family, I think. I may have hurt yours. 13. A galaxy of New Zealand's best love stars. The knives came out for the big night in, and Dobbin made remarkable suggestions to the Herald. I suggested that the white piano on the foyer of TVNZ should be lodged firmly up Ian Fraser's bum. Saturday on one. 
12. Aucklanders may smirk at this ad from Southland TV, now on Sky Digital, but when did you ever see a commercial this honest? We voted the year's best. Great value meals on offer and plenty to do. Relax with a game of pool, try your luck on the pokies, sit back and enjoy the best sporting contests on the big screen or make the most of summer outside in our garden bar. Come out and see us soon at the Gorge Road Country Club. You'll enjoy the difference. 11. Butterworth wins Most Gracious Man Award. Finally, I guess if you could wrap it up and, and, and describe uh, what the difference was in the end between Alinghi and Team New Zealand. 5-0. Well done. Thanks. 10. Umanga and board game analogy outburst. Captain Tana Umanga fit up. We're not playing till we fit up. 9. A cheeky pizza company gets up Madge's bum, the best billboard of the year. Eight. Middle class madness as the foreshore furor drives Nelson Ninnies onto the street. We are joined together and make a marvellous country. Seven. Prostitution law reform sparks the year's best speech from Georgina. It would be nice to have known that instead of having to deal out the justice myself afterwards to that person, I may have been able to approach the authorities, the police in this case, and say, I was raped. And yes, I'm a prostitute. And no, it was not right that I should have been raped because I said no. Six. I sometimes wonder whether I'm a victim of my own success as a popular and competent Prime Minister. Oh, hell I do not control everything. Five. P replaces E as the most dangerous letter in the alphabet. Four. Desperate celebrities sell off their babies in record numbers. Three. Ian Wishart sees a gay conspiracy and makes allegations about the PM's peccadilloes. She is the most powerful person in the country. So do, does that mean it's all right to speculate yeah, on her it's sexuality? Not, not speculation, it's, it's true. Stand up in the court of law and swear it. Absolutely no problem with it. Two. The United States military forces captured Saddam Hussein alive. They got him, and boy did they gloat. On this Monday, we're in a safer world as a result of the capture of Saddam Hussein. Imagine if you were President Assad of Syria, knowing that the same thing could happen to you. Email mirth exploded, and Steve Bell from The Guardian delivered the best editorial cartoon of the year. One. And our number one TV moment of 2003, Jody Rimmer at the Fight for Life. I want to be able to result so far, but uh, hopefully I can change it next, in the next fight. I've got a feeling you could probably rectify it. You're looking really, really buff. Look at those abs. The guy's huge. Now, Mark, you know, do you think boxing's a really good thing because it actually gets you to channel your uh, inner anger, which we know you've had problems with in the past? Yeah, probably. Um, it's good to uh, be able to take aggression out on someone, and, and it's good for for a great cause as well, you yeah, know, because yeah. we're making people really listen, stand up and listen, and uh, let's hope it's a, it's a good, good clean fight and we Aussies win. Well, we're very excited to see you out there. I don't know if the Aussies are going to win, but um, on behalf of the New Zealand women, we're all very excited to have you. I'm in the country, and I'm very excited to be standing next to you. Um, a lot of women have been wanting to know, do you have a big knob? <laughs> big enough. Big enough. That's my guy, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Nominated for Saddest Exit. Well, here we all are, the, oh, the old team That's here for the last nice time. <laughs> and it has been a really, really special 16 years. Good evening. New Zealand champion McGinty started as favourite. They come to where rain never stops play. The Network News at 6 with Richard Long and Angela Dordney. The first to go was John Howard. Richard's earned a very special place in the hearts of the One News team. This is a man of honour and integrity and we just love him to bits and we're going to miss him terribly. Oh, He's no. a bit rough around the edges, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you come up with that. Thank you, James. He's not a bad broadcaster yeah. either, you know. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Thank you. Not so, from us all, have a very happy Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. And many blessings. Take care of each other. Good night. <laughs> Still to come. We visit the best newsreader of all time, and so long Richard Long, behind the scenes at the saddest day in the history of TVNZ.
1969, the first network news was broadcast on New Zealand TV. And for the first time, the whole country watched the same news at the same time. Fronting the broadcast was a young man called Dougal, who became the voice of more than one generation. And all without the aid of an auto cue, a six-figure salary or plastic surgery. Port Chalmers, home to giant cranes, feral artists and the best damn newsreader this country has ever seen. Driving conditions in the Manawatu, Wairarapa and Southern Hawke's Bay have been hazardous. Near Woodville, four caravans have been blown over and vehicles towing caravans have been stopped from using the state highways between Woodville and Pahiatua and Woodville and Dannyburg. Dougal, you read the first ever network news bulletin? I read the first news bulletin on Television One in 1975. And I honestly can't remember when the first network was, when the first network bulletin was read, no. So was it before 1975? You tell me, John. It says it was 69. And they said I read the first one. Yes, yeah, 69. It says it on TV. Yeah, just three weeks. Yeah, cut. Sorry, guys. We've got, Sorry. We've got Sorry. some minor research problems. But surprisingly, our research was right. There were protest marches against the Vietnam War in nine American cities during Easter. New York, where about 50,000 demonstrators took to the streets of Manhattan in one of the biggest marches seen there. A feature of this march were the numbers of servicemen who took part. Although they weren't in uniform, they were distinguished by their special paper hats. Dougal was reading the news before they landed on the moon and all through the grisly Vietnam War. Would I queue? No. No, when we read the news, we read the news. We had sheets of paper in front of us and we read from those sheets of paper. So you had your eyes down? Um, well, you, you hoped to be able to communicate as much as possible to camera and to do that, enabled, to enable yourself to do that, then you went through the news, I don't know, I, don't, I imagine in 1975, three or four or five times you would read the pre-read the news before you actually read the news on air. The new satellite ground station at Walkworth will become this country's link with the world when the Postmaster General opens it tomorrow night. And there was also an, an, an ethos, if you like, an ethic, I suppose, that when you read the news, that's what you did, you read the news. You didn't have any device on the camera which assisted you to read the news, which made it look as though you had memorised the news. No, you actually literally read the news. They used to make half-hearted attempts to introduce a machine that wasn't unlike an auto cue. One of them, I remember, was like a roll of toilet paper, which sat below the lens, and you controlled it with a sewing machine, speed treadle, under the thing. So you'd be, oh, God, move, move. <laughs> and like that, it was just hopeless. The country today ground to a halt in the major cities as the threat of a general strike loomed. In 1977, Roger Donaldson cast Dougal as himself in the groundbreaking movie Sleeping Dogs. In those days, he was more famous than Sam Neill. Were newsreaders celebrities in those days? Uh, well, they certainly weren't celebrities in the way that people are celebrities now, but they were household names, oh yes, and you couldn't go anywhere without people, you know, hi, how are you, what's the news, <laughs> all that sort of thing, and uh, you just accepted that. Well, how do you say this word here? Oh, no, please, no, I'm not going to say it. To me. I'm too old. What's that one? Issue. There you go. Let's see, no. that's the one. That's the one because a lot of people say issue, but it's actually an issue. Well, you see, now that's becoming a New Zealand way of saying it, but it, I find that slightly unattractive. And you may think I'm old-fashioned and ridiculous and that I've just, I'm bogged down in my received pronunciation from the BBC, which yeah. is no longer like the sort of the, the thing that we imagined it was. But issue, it would be, if you were spelling it phonetically, you'd have an I, yeah. issue, with a, a yod, like mm. a J, mm. issue. One issue that I wanted to raise was to do with another well-known newsreader, Darren MacDonald. Just don't do drugs, everyone. Thank what's, you. What's on for the rest of the day, Darren? I'm going home to have a drink. Did you ever do a Darren MacDonald? Uh, no, I don't. I've never taken drugs. I smoked. Never taken drugs. I drink. I used to have the odd beer, yes. Did what? you ever do it completely twanged? Did you ever turn what up? What the hell was that mean? Twang it. Yeah, did you ever turn up? <laughs> did you ever turn up completely Plucked, twang it? Twang twang it. And you know, Sounds like words some are, as Darren said, the words are going across like the wrong he was having they were going across the wrong way apparently. Well, I must say that I probably had a couple of beers before the odd bulletin, but not after nineteen seventy five. We'd certainly have a few later in the evening, possibly. 
So they don't do that anymore. You don't see Bailey twang it before she reads it, you know? I hope you wouldn't see me or anyone else twang it. No, there's a certain amount of responsibility. <laughs> there has to be. It's hard to decide what you twang it. Where did you come up with that? That's Auckland, it's a twangin'. Although he wouldn't say it, you can tell that Dougal isn't too impressed yeah. with the modern news. Well, with all its fancy now, sets and American tomorrow, consultants. Australia's a gone burger, but the showers and, the, uh, and a bit of frost, well, they're sort of cum burgers, if you know what I mean. Do we really need all that organised informality, expensive sets and no ties? American consultants. Um... <laughs> <laughs> They used to be the bane of my... Well, actually, they never, they never happened to us. Never. Well, apparently American Sorry, consultants well came, came across to, to New Zealand and said that John Campbell is the two big... Hold on, the last that question again. Now, look, I'll tell you a story about somebody who, um, whose ears... They wouldn't tell this person that he wasn't functioning well on television. So they decided that if... It would be easier for him to accept this if they told him his ears were too big. And thus he could, you know, blame his physical features and not his um, talent or lack of it. So he went away and got them fixed. Then he had to come back with his new ears, and then they had to tell him the truth. That's, That's pretty tough. Thing. Yeah, it's tough. We Who was that? I'm not, gonna... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. It wasn't, it wasn't you, was it? What? Was it you? No. no. My ears too big. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm... No, they're not. That's what I mean. You might have had them. Oh, they're not too put big. Back. No, no, not at all. Oh, Jeremy, that's so they're not sweet. Gonna, they're not going to stop growing, that's though. So you know sweet. that. They? They're going to keep growing. Well, they went on the nose. Your well. nose My and nose your will grow after this interview, your I can nose, tell you. Your nose yeah. and your ears will just keep growing. Dougal Stevenson, broadcasting icon. May I say, in the words of Star Wars, may the Force go with you. Right, so thank you very much. No one ever gave me flowers before. Thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica. We'll have more news on Television One at 9.30. Dougal last read the news on February 15, 1980. He's now based in his hometown of Dunedin, where he's acting and singing and contributing to the Sunday morning show on national radio. I've run the gauntlet of bodily functions from A to P, but surely I haven't fully plumbed the depths to which the body media has sunk to. There must be some fresh way in which I can critique those purveyors of the obnoxious and infantile. Mate! Nah. That's way too obvious. Still to come, some EML shockers and so long Richard Long. Behind the scenes as Richard, April and Jim say see you for the last time. To the delisted stock list now and popular and sleazy disgruntled employee bitch fest shut down in October. Ralston 86, the Burt Reynolds of news and high price pony clear out. Cauliflower ears had a shitter of a year, seal. And she's a gone burger as Hickey heads back to the Naki. And it's off to the freezing works for Lambo as Good Morning moves to Wellington. Now, look, we've received many letters from well wishes this year. And while some older viewers have been a little less charitable, we'd like to thank you all for your correspondence, even the package that contained a dead animal. In our first episode, we featured an expose on Talkback Radio and received almost 35 letters, one postcard and a gift, a rather lovely erotic cake. How would our talk show hosts deal with a stuttering caller interrupting the flow of their shows? Morning, Bob. Uh, m m morning, Mary. How, how are you? Excellent, thanks. I, I, th I think these, it, 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 these emissions should 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 be introduced. I think is what you're trying to say, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Lambie comes in at eight seconds, and worse, barely contains a smirk there and there. The media dog helped spread goodwill and Christmas cheer, although one comedian blew a fuse. Just kidding. And we apologise for the spate of suicides caused by the cat. Heading tonight's bulletin, an international summit of leading scientists have come to the conclusion that the world is fucked. Which probably explains why I'm now placing a gun in my mouth and pulling the trigger. 
some viewers express concern about this question. New Zealand pussy. Yeah. Discuss. Uh, there's a lot of felines around. I'm a married man. What are you talking about? Oh, you're a married man. I'm you are too. Of course man. you're a married man. Yeah. And our apology to the late Sir Robert Muldoon. That doesn't give you much time to run up to an election, Prime Minister. Doesn't give my opponents much time to run up to an election, does it? What a lot of people don't know is after Sir Robert announced the snap election, he came through this door, walked down this hallway here, and of course the curvature of the beehive meant that he got slightly disorientated, started feeling sick, leant over here, vomited mainly fluid and bits of corn, and what? spat, wipe his face like this, and then proceeded through here. That in fact did not happen, although surprisingly, this actually did. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, technician B seems to have undressed himself completely. He's using a lot of glad wrap. Well, that glad wrap isn't that expensive, but it does belong to the homeowner and not to the technician. Now this doesn't look promising. Here come a pussy. Here come a pussy. The toilet is just around the corner. Surely that's inappropriate. And that's our show. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch, and I really do mean this, I'm sorry for the people we've hurt this year. Never mind the fact I was trying to be satirical. I was trying to shock. I was tired. It didn't work. I've hurt my family, I think. I may have hurt yours. But in all my dealings with you, I've always tried to display honesty and compassion. And I've always taken great pride in saying, from all of us here at Eating Media Lunch. At number 94. Of sport. Thanks for all your love and support over the years. It's been great. I'll miss you, but I'll miss you too very much. We'll and you. we'll <laughs> miss you. April, Jim and Richard say hi re ra. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.